Hi everyone, I'm Zhong Li, and this work is done jointly with my colleague Pei Jie Yuan and our advisor Hong Yi Li. I'll be talking today about new way to analyze hidden representations of end-to-end -end ASR through synthesizing speech from network layers. This is today's outline. We will first give an introduction on analyzing DNNs in speech recognition. The proposed approach of using speech synthesis to analyze speech recognition models. And then we proceed to our experiments, which includes using our method to analyze the speaker and noise information in end-to-end -end NSR model. And it finally concludes our paper. So let's start the introduction. There are already plenty of work on analyzing neural networks in NSR systems. For example, Mohammed et al. showed that DNNs are good at normalizing feature vectors across different speakers using visual TSNI visualizations. While these analyses are already clear for researchers, we feel like it is still not intuitive enough for public audience to understand. So if we are able to let them hear how DNNs process speech signals, it would be an interesting direction in model explanation. So the motivation is for audio inputs, could we directly hear how the ASR model process audio inputs? For example, we might expect ASR model to discard information irrelevant to linguistic content. For example, the identity of the speaker or background noise as the layer goes deeper. Here we propose an intuitive method of autifying ASR hidden states that is largely model agnostic. Namely, it doesn't require special model architecture and is therefore compatible with most existing neural ASR models. Let's proceed to the next session, the proposed approach. We now introduce our workflow of autifying ASR hidden states. We first train an n-layer ASR model with CTC loss. The input is 80-dimensional male spectrograms with deltas and accelerations being stacked along the channel dimension. Then we fix the ASR model, takes on layers hidden states, for example, take layer one's hidden states as the input of the probing model. And then we train the probing model to recover the input speech. The objective is to minimize the loss between recovered spectrograms and original spectrograms. And so if the original speech sounds like... And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short, happy bits. A reconstructed output from layer one should sound like... And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short app. Which doesn't differ much, since it's only one layer deep and almost no information is lost. Then we repeat this process for other layers and train another probing model to minimize loss. For example, here we take the last layer of ASR hidden states and train another probing model. Let's listen to the output. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. So we, we can heard that deeper layer actually loses more timber and prosody of a speaker, which is in line with the literature that uh, DNS effectively normalizes representations of different speaker. So we found that our probing model actually can review what is left in the hidden state through the recovered speech. Now we introduce the architecture of our probing model, which is shown in the red bounding box. The length of the hidden state is first upsampled back to the original length by a linear projection if it has been downsampled previously in the ASR network. Then we fed it into a four-layer highway network and output the reconstructed spectrogram. In the next section, I'll go through the settings and results of our probing model experiment. So first, we'd like to compare ASR models under different training conditions using our probing model. Here we choose to do data augmentation. We use Libre Speech Train Clean 100 Hour Subset as our speech corpus, and later augment the clean set with Musan corpus, which has music, babbling, and noise recordings. We train two types of ASR models in the following experiment. Baseline model, which train only on the Train Clean 100 subset of Libre Speech, and noise robust model, which trained on train clean 100 subset and also augmented with noises in Musan corpus. In our second experimental setting, we study the effect of model architecture on processing speaker and noise information. There are two ASR models being analyzed in the following experiments. The top one is a pure LSTM model, which has five bidirectional LSTM layers, 
with downside playing performed after a second, third, and fourth layer. The bottom one is a VGG LST model, which is comprised of four convolutional layers and five bidirectional LSTM layers. Each convolutional layer is followed by a ReLU activation, and max pooling is applied every two convolutional layers. Both models are trained with CTC loss on baseline and noise robust settings. And here's the world error rate of our models under all different experimental settings. We found that VGG outperforms LSTM on average, and augmentation helps. In all of the following probing experiment, apart from clean speech, we also fed clean noisy speech at different signal to noise ratios. And whatever input as are received, we asked probing models to reconstruct it. So if a probing model failed to reconstruct noise in the input speech, we could infer that the ASR models is doing denoising. We begin with experiments on speaker information. So first, we'd like to analyze the speaker information flow in the ASR model. Here we take VLSTM as an example. This is the original input speech. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of He gave way to the others very readily and retreated unperceived by the squire and Mistress Fitzooth to the rear. And after the first bias TM layer, female voice. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. After the third bias TM layer, female voice. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of shock. So speaker information is slightly lost in layer three. And we'll proceed to the last layer. Both speaker, female first. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. And male voice, last layer. He gave way to the others very readily and retreated unperceived by the squire and his first tissues to the rear. We can directly hear from Lee Sensei speech that timbre and prosody of the speaker are gradually removed out as layer goes deeper, demonstrating that our probing model provide a more intuitive way of explaining known behavior of neural ASR models. We performed some speaker verification experiments on the generated speech to quantify the loss of speaker information in the ASR hidden states. On the right of the slides, we have the speaker verification pipeline. So for speaker A and B, we fed it into the pipeline of ASR model and probing model and generated the um, recovered spectrogram. Then we fed them into the speaker verification model and asked our latest sense speakers, the higher the equal error rate, the less speaker information is left in the hidden states. And here's the results. We used two verification model, thin ResNet and LSTM D vector. And as can be seen from the figure, both models observe an increase in ER as the layer goes deeper, which demonstrating that speaker characteristics are actually gradually removed, and which is in line with our previous observations in this generated speech. In this demo, we take a look at what phenomenon our probing model discovers in VGG LSTM ASR models. First, we focus on CN part. First CN1. The old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. Then CN4. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. It's interesting that the CN part of the model does not affect the spectrogram so much, which accords with the mild increase of ER values in speaker verification experiment. We believe that it is because the CN part behaves like filters that extract different patterns in the spectrograms, but does not remove much information. And then the LSTM part. First, LSTM one. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. And the last layer, LSTM five. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series so same behavior as pure LSTM. The timbre and prosody of the speaker are seriously eliminated in LSTM layer, which can also be observed from the drastically increased ER values. We proceed to the noise information experiment. So this demo is about 
uh, comparing the denoising cap capability of VGGL's team baseline model and noise robust model. And here's the noisy input speech. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. And the CNN one output of baseline model. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. CNN one of robust model. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. CNN four of baseline model. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. CN4 of noise robust model. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. The piano noise is severely suppressed in noise robust model, but not the baseline model. And BIOS TM1 of baseline model. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of short. Piano noise in noise robust model almost disappears, but similarly not baseline model. The last layer of baseline model. The noise actually greatly affects baseline model in the last layer and thus result in the higher word error rate of baseline model. Base, uh, last layer of noise robust model. And the old gentleman was so delighted with his success that he had to burst out into a series of. As you can hear, um, noise robust models successively remove noise. To further verify that our probing model faithfully convey the difference of denoising capability between baseline and noise robust ASR, we adopt the, the STOI measure, which stands for a short time objective intelligibility. The lower the STOI, the more the distortion. So we measured STOI between clean speech and the recovered audio and compared the difference of STOI between baseline and noise robot systems. And here's the result. Red, green, and blue correspond to Ipun SNR minus 20 dB, minus 10 dB, and 0 dB. Well, we observe an inevitable drop of STOI in both baseline and robust ASR, which can be attributed to the loss of speaker information. Noise robust ASR, the solid lines, actually suffers less from the input degradation and achieves better STOIs compared to the baseline, which is the dotted lines. In this work, we propose a new and intuitive way of analyzing ASR through autifying hidden states. It is largely model agnostic, there is no constraint on the model architecture, and thus can be, can be widely applied to all kinds of neural ASMR. And finally, we conduct various measures on generated speech, and it shows findings largely consistent with the literature. And if you'd like to listen to more recovered speech, here's the QR code. Thank you very much.